Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So sit back and enjoy. Adara Europis Synagogue. It was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. The black presence in the lands of the Bible, page 15. Jan Juan Rodriguez, Sephardic Jew, Black man, a Latino, Atlantic Creole, first black man in Manhattan. Sixteen nineteen. Jamestown, Virginia. It was 400 years ago, about the latter end of August, that an English privateer ship reached Point Comfort on the Virginia Peninsula. There, Governor George Yardley and his head of trade, Cape Merchant Abraham Piercy, brought the twenty and odd Negroes aboard in exchange for victuals, meaning they traded food for slaves. 1619, the first enslaved Negroes arrived in Jamestown, Virginia. This date has traditionally Mark the beginning of slavery in North America for black Americans. Indeed, this was a monumental, sad period in history. But six years earlier, a little further up north, in the place that will eventually become known as the Empire State of New York on the island of Manhattan. In 1613, Jan Juan Rodriguez became the first black man to live in Manhattan. The Timeline 14 92. Christopher Columbus discovers the island Española, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic for Spain. 1613. Jan Juan Rodriguez, the first non Native American Indian on the island of Manhattan. 1619. Jamestown, Virginia. First arrival of 20 enslaved Negroes to the British colony. 1619. What's really interesting about Jan is that he is historically documented as a black man, Jew, Latino, Portuguese, Spanish, and a Creole. End 
last but not least, one point that has to be mentioned. He was a free man of color. Juan Iana Rodriguez. Juan Rodriguez, Dutch. Jan Rodriguez, Portuguese. Yao Rodriguez was the first documented non-indigenous inhabitant to live on Manhattan Island. As such, he is considered the first non-native resident of what would eventually become New York City. As he was born in the Capitacy General of Santo Domingo, the first colony of Spain, to a Portuguese sailor and a West African woman. He is considered by many to be the first person of European and or West African origin to settle on the island of Manhattan. Santa Domingo, the Dominican Republic. Raised in a culturally diverse environment in the Spanish settlement of Santo Domingo, Rodriguez was known for his linguistic talents and was hired by the Dutch captain, this Valquez Masu of the John Tobias to serve as the translator on a trading voyage to the Nalapi island of Manhattan. Arriving in 1613, Rodriguez soon came to learn the Algonquian language of the Lenape people and married into the local community. When Masu's ship returned to the Netherlands, Rodriguez stayed behind with his Lenape family and set up his own trading post with goods given to him by Masu consisting of 80 hatchets, some knives, a musket, and a sword. Ian Rodriguez, Spanish, Black Rascal. From the website The Root, Ian Rodriguez, the first black man, to set foot on the island of Manhattan. In 1613, seven years before the pilgrims landed in Plymouth, and six years before a Dutch vessel sold 20 Africans to the Virginia colonists at Jamestown, a black man named Jan Rodriguez was the first non-Native American to settle and trade on what is now Manhattan Island. Rodriguez described in Dutch records as Spanish and a black rascal was born in Santo Domingo, present day Dominican Republic to a European, possibly Portuguese father and a mother of African descent and where he was presumably known as Juan Rodriguez. Rodriguez is described as Spanish and Black Rascal. Jan Rodriguez, Atlantic Creole, Dominican, influenced by the Taino population. This is another source. Early Encounters. Dominican Republican. New York City. Atlantic Creole. Jan Rodriguez. Or Ron Rodriguez. Depending upon the source.
Ian Rodriguez or Juan Rodriguez, depending upon the source, was born in Santa Domingo, formerly present-day Dominican Republic, to an African woman, not clear if she was enslaved or free, and a Portuguese sailor. Except for a small number of Spanish officials and colonists, the majority of people on Santa Domingo were black or mixed race, some enslaved, some free, and many shared a culture that was influenced by the indigenous Taino population. Here's another historically documented account from ABHM, America's Black Holocaust Museum, bringing our history to light. Jan Rodriguez, the first black man on the island of Manhattan. In 1613, seven years before the pilgrims landed in Plymouth, and six years before a Dutch vessel sold 20 Africans to the Virginia colonists at Jamestown. A black man named Jan Rodriguez was the first non-native American to settle and trade on what is now Manhattan Island. Rodriguez described in Dutch records as Spanish and a black rascal was born in Santo Domingo, present day Dominican Republic, to a European, possibly Portuguese father and a mother of African descent, and where he was presumably known as Juan Rodriguez. Other than a fairly small number of Spanish bureaucrats and colonists, the majority of people on Santa Domingo were black or mixed race. Some enslaved, some free, and many shared a culture that was influenced by the indigenous Taino population. A mural of Juan Rodriguez in Harlem River Park and a contemporary Dutch painting purported to be a likeness of Rodriguez. A mural of Jan Rodriguez in Harlem River Park. Jan Juan Rodriguez. New Amsterdam, 1671. From the website, Six Square Feet. Latin in Manhattan, a look at early Hispanic New York. Every year, starting on September 15th, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month to recognize the contributions and accomplishments of Hispanic Americans. Over 2.4 million New Yorkers, or nearly one-third of the city's population identify as Hispanic or Latino. The city's thriving Latin community marks the most recent chapter in the history of Latin New York, which stretches over 400 years. Ahead, learn about early Hispanic New York 
starting with the arrival of Juan Rodriguez, the first non-Native American person to live in New York City. In the spring of 1613, Juan Rodriguez, also known as Jan Rodriguez, a free mixed race Dominican man from Santa Domingo, became the first non-Native American person to live in what would become New York City. He arrived aboard a Dutch trading vessel, declined to leave with the rest of the crew, and stayed on until 1614 as a fur trader. Rodriguez settlement predates the first settlers of New Amsterdam by a full 11 years, making him the first immigrant, the first black person, the first merchant, and the first Latino to live in New York City. Ian Juan Rodriguez, Hispanic, first black person, the first merchant, the first Latino to live in New York City. The City University of New York Dominican Studies Institute Research Monograph Juan Rodriguez in the Beginnings of New York City Anthony Stevens Alcevedo Tom Wetterings Leonor Alvarez Francis Introduction Page 1. Juan Rodriguez, a largely unknown historical figure. There is solid archival evidence that in the spring of 1613, a Dutch merchant ship named John Tobias arrived in the Hudson Harbor to explore the potential wealth of the area especially the potential for trade with the local Native Americans for animal furs that could be resold in Europe's garment market. The ship's crew included a black or mulatto free man born in San Domingo, the Spanish colony island in the Caribbean, also known as La Española and whose name appears spelled as Jan Rodriguez. After spending some time in the Hudson area, the sources state that the Dutch captain decided to return to the Netherlands with his crew, only to find out that Juan Rodriguez did not want to continue the trip to Europe and wanted to stay in the Hudson Harbor instead, and even threatening to jump overboard at the first opportunity if he was forced to go on the ship to the Netherlands. Ultimately, the captain agreed to leave Rodriguez behind and left for Europe. In their descriptions, the sailors referred to a dark-skinned man from St. Domingo named Juan Ollana Rodriguez, who had come aboard one of the Dutch ships, captained by Dice Masso, apparently as a sailor, page Two. Baker indicated that Rodriguez assisted Maso 
presumably as an interpreter with the native tribes and added that such black interpreters as Rodriguez were of high value to the Europeans. Black interpreters degradado or Jews like Rodriguez. In 1996, renowned North American slavery historian Ira Berlin published one of the most influential articles on the subject from Creole to African, Atlantic Creoles, and the origins of African American society in mainland North America. In the William and Mary Quarterly, the article is devoted to the Atlantic Creoles. The segment of the African and Afro descent population that during colonial times lived in the Atlantic world. According to Berlin, Atlantic Creole refers to those who by experience or choice, as well as by birth, became part of a new culture that emerged along the Atlantic littoral in Africa, Europe, or the Americas, beginning in the 16th century. Blurred differences between African and Creoles. Africans and Creoles were connected by ties of kinship and friendship. They worked together, played together, intermarried, and on occasion stood together against assaults on their freedom. Creoles were the enslaved from Portugal and Spain. Jews of color from Europe. They lived in Spain during the age of the Moors. Africans were communities of Jews that lived in the African continent from the days of the Greco-Roman empires. Berlin identifies Juan Rodriguez as Atlantic Creole. In fact, Berlin is the first known scholar to label Juan Rodriguez as a bona fide member of the Atlantic Creole community. Juan or Jan Juan Rodriguez was a Atlantic Creole. Despite his color, he was a free man. He served his new employer as translator and agent, collecting furs from the native population. Rodriguez changed his allegiances yet again, only to be denounced as a turncoat and that black rascal, barely escaping with his life he stood up residence with some friendly Indians. He was a free man of color and took a Native American wife. Jan Juan Rodriguez was also a Jew. The Spanish element in our nationality, Spain and America at the world's fears and centennial celebrations, 1876 to 1915. M. Elizabeth Boone. When the New York 
York Historical Society organized Nuva York, 1613-1945, a 2010 catalog and exhibition at the Museo del Barrio in New York. The authors begin their narrative with the 1613 arrival of Juan Rodriguez, called Jan Rodriguez by the Dutch, a Spanish-speaking Sephardic Jew from Santo Domingo in what is now the Dominican Republic. Page 11. Hispanic New York, a source book. On the basis of these considerations, we can state that New York City is, at the same time, both a fixed and nomadic Hispanic or Latino cultural center. Ever since 1527, when Diego Ribeiro sketched the outlines of the Bay, in which present-day New York City is located, the Hispanic imagination has been constantly entranced with the space and the city that will become not only the cultural capital of the world, in the second half of the 20th century, but one of the most important and vital Latino cultural centers in existence. In those early days, the present day Hudson was known as the San Antonio River because a Spanish ship captained by the black Portuguese navigator Esteban Gomez explored the mouth of this river on 17th January, the Feast of St. Anthony. 1526, one year after its sighting by the first European explorer, the Italian Giovanni the Reverzano, page 246 Esteban Gomez, a black Portuguese. Continuing from the same book, in 1612, Dutch merchants constructed the first trading post in Mahates, present day Manhattan. Their interpreter was a free African, Jan Rodriguez, who would eventually settle on the island. Visiting New Amsterdam in 1643, the French Jesuit missionary Isaac Janges noted that 18 different languages were spoken in the town, including Spanish. The historical documents show that the origins of the use of Spanish in New York are tied to three marginalized groups of Iberian extraction. A free African, Jan Rodriguez. Continuing from the same book, Spanish Portuguese Jews, Spanish sailors, locally known as Spanish Negroes, and a group of slaves identified as the Spanish Indians. Spanish Negroes, Spanish Indians. In 1741, the population of New York numbered 10,000 people, 2,000 of which were slaves, many of these being 
Spanish Negroes. The term Spanish Negroes refers to the formerly free crewmen of Spanish ships captured in the Caribbean by the English who were brought to New York and there traded as slaves. Spanish Negroes, free crewmen of Spanish ships, the first black New Yorkers, 1741. The Western Sephardic Jews became the Lasados. The Lasados became the Criollos and the Creoles. The Criollos and Creoles became so called Africans of the transatlantic slave trade. This is an ethnic ancestral chart. Follow us on our Twitter page.